Alright guys, time to cry back again today. I hope y'all are doing well and enjoying your day so far and as Vostomania continues to soldier on more announcements to discuss today but also Slasher certainly talking about the leaks that have come out that have allowed these rosters to become known to the public before they were officially confirmed and where those leaks might exactly be coming from. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. A few of you guys were noticing the different lighting yesterday. Just wanted to address that real quick. Right now I'm on holiday for a couple of weeks so I'm on this like laptop setup, it's going to be slightly different. Today, the lighting actually looks really good, so I'm happy about that. But um, yes, we'll have to see how it goes the coming days. Apologies if things are slightly dodgy, but uh, it should be all okay. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the content regardless. We're going to do our best. First of all, this from Charlie Intel talking about Call of Duty 2022, a direct sequel to Modern Warfare 2019, covert war against Colombian drug cartels. That's what's going to go on. I don't really know what's happening anymore, but um, yeah, leaks clearly for the next title in 2022 before this game is even out. But we talked about that yesterday and what that could mean for competitive play. First of all, this from the Seattle Surge. Yesterday, they were leaking what their roster was well, at least uh, the announcement of their roster coming relatively soon. This is when they kind of confirm, um, well, not necessarily confirm, but give some hint towards uh, what that might potentially be. So some more Morse code in the background. Chrome was, uh, you know, tweeting about this saying, okay, I'm going to call up my Morse code translator. This is uh, what it translates to. The water is freezing over. So the kind of, uh, you know, the beeps and the, you know, whatever in the background. That's what it means. And um, of course, well, that could potentially refer to the Iceman, which is, um, of course, accuracy well, Lamar Accuracy, a Betty. And you can see right here, these are kind of the two individuals across time that have been considered the Iceman. That's Accuracy and TJ Halley. And um, Ice, you know, generally Ice in the veins, you know, this type of stuff. Accuracy's been called that for years, so maybe that's what the Seattle Surger well, are hinting at right here. And then this, of course, from the Toronto Ultra. Hey, the flank, prep the stream for tonight. But of course, as I said, it says, you know, excellent bait to prepare everyone for the obvious and inevitable. The Toronto Ultra have decided to run it back. The Toronto said, look, that's weird. New 2022 roster. I literally pay everyone on your staff $100,000 each if this is real. You sure about that says Centre. There were some other replies that came out from the Toronto Twitter account. Maybe actually in reply to this one. When, um, they were kind of hinting right here again, our staff very soon indeed. When, um, well, indeed, they do get the new roster confirmed. However, things that go pretty much as we expected to. Our COD League roster until 2023, we are bringing it home. Of course, they're introducing, as they say right here, the video is really good, actually. Our new Call of Duty 2022 roster. As you can see there, well, you can see Scum right here, and then Sip comes in from Atlanta Phase. Then you've got um, Crim6, of course, in the Dallas Empire, and then Clayster for the subliners, and that is the squad of four. But um, unfortunately, that's not going to be the case, even though it would be a pretty interesting team of four, most certainly. Welcome back to the original four. We've got Clinics, we've got Insights, we've got Bantz of Okami. That is going to be the, well, the greatest European roster that we've ever seen is um, going to be returning once again for another year. Very excited to see this as a European Call of Duty fan. The very interesting thing about this, you could say, is that um, they've been signed until 2023, especially when we go on to look at the replies in just a second here. It may well indicate this is um, one of the well, one of the more interesting contract signing situations that we have seen in the league. But just wanted to look real quick at their results for last season because pretty remarkable to see. Since Insight joined the team in stage two, like um, look right at the start of the season, not so pretty in stage one. Insight comes in, they come fifth, sixth uh, during the regular stage two. Like they didn't have the greatest league play matches there, but then they went into the major and they won the entire thing. And then towards the end of the season, stage three major they came third, stage four major they came third, then second, then second to end out the year. So remarkable performances really from the Ultra guys and um, great to see them sticking together. There was quite a time where people were wondering whether Kleenex was going to be on this roster, whether he was going to be going elsewhere and that was certainly an understandable discussion point because there was a fair bit of talk from Zoom and others, the fact that uh, he had not extended his contract going into the next year. So the fact that he was re-signed I think is great for European fans and Ultra in general right? because Kleenex would have been such a hot property on the market really. There's not too many incredible like aggressive SMG players like what Kleenex brings to this team but Kleenex and Bant seem to uh, like a well round rounded SMG duo in terms of what they bring to the roster. But I was um, happy to see them there again. Because if Clinics had gone elsewhere, like, I don't know who Ultra get that possibly can replace Clinics. It's tough to say. But as I say in reply, love to see it, gents. Hope Clinics secured the bag. And Grey's an over at Adam Adamo over at Toronto Ultra says every Ultra starter has a new contract. This may be kind of, um, well, talking about this whole 2023 thing, right? Maybe they said, look, we're going to sign you guys on new contracts for more money from the start of this year. And it's going to be like a one plus one type deal where we can potentially sign you for two more years 
in total, which would be really interesting if Toronto keep the same roster for this entire season just gone, then two more seasons after that. That um, could be the case, right? Because they're saying, okay, this is a 2022 roster, but this is going to be our team until at least 2023, which um, maybe that just means like, you know, the entirety of 2022 and then the start of 2023, it could be different. And of course it could be different. They could decide to make moves, but um, maybe that the contracts they've signed are with these guys to stay with each other for a very long time, which is interesting because a lot of hot properties on this team, Cami clinics especially, that I'm sure other offers came in for. But um, as it seems right now, this is going to be the roster for quite a while into the future. And as Bances, I thought this is kind of remarkable. He's of course been um, on Splice for so many years before even the CDL existed. And this is his sixth year going to be going into this time with Splice Toronto and alongside the Bros, because the kind of um, ownership group of Splice and the same type of guys that own the Toronto team now. So it's already interesting that Bances has been around this long. But um, certainly wanted to talk about this from what Wallace Seam had to say a few days ago. Leaks have actually killed all cut announcements. Absolutely tragic stuff. So of course, we saw Los Angeles Grillers confirm their team a few days ago. And as Clayson said in reply at the time, like the real question is, which amateur is getting paid hundreds of dollars a roster to leak them all? And we talked about the fact that um, probably the pros are just kind of running their mouths a little bit too much and leaking some of this stuff um, to Crone that um, shouldn't necessarily be out there. But of course, there's so many people involved with these deals that things can potentially get leaked through. And um, well, this is what Slash Roster said a few days ago as well. I didn't actually see this at the time. So I thought I'd mention it now. Someone got a leak in their circle. I know for a fact it is not coming from mine. So this is the thing, right? Is it the pro players themselves? Is it other players involved with the deal? Because of course, as I say, there's so many people involved with a lot of these announcements and all the pros are going to know. But, um, you know, where are these announcements exactly coming from? Because we've known that Toronto are probably going to stick for quite a while now. And some of these other announcements as well that have come up, we've heard from Crone, what it is, well, what the likely it is for some of these rosters ahead of time. So that's just saying, look, some of these guys, maybe even indicating someone on his own team, right? Because his own team got leaked as well. Um, you know, has a leak somewhere in their circle because he sounded like, okay, he didn't come from my circle. So, um, yeah, well, one of you other guys, like a Seam Hook or, or Gunless, it's come up from one of those circles, right? I suppose this leak has come out from. But at the end of the day, so many of the players know what the other players are doing because the pros are going to talk to other pros what they're up to. And then maybe it's one of those pros that have a leak in their circle or whatever. But um, Slash is certainly saying, yeah, no leak in my circle. And to be fair, we've seen in the past that in situations like for Hector Rodriguez, for example, he said, yes, his optic circle is really tight. Like nothing's um, nothing's leaking out of there. But of course, like immediately as soon as this optic Dallas thing is going on, things start to get leaked. And maybe the leaks are instead coming from kind of the envy side of things. It's, it's kind of tough to say. But as soon as Hex seems to be doing deals with other people, then the leaks come to the, the forefront, right? And this, of course, remains to be seen when those things will get confirmed. But um, well, these, of course, are what have been confirmed so far. So Atlanta phase, we know they're going to stick into next year. Same for BZ, Selly, and Manastis. And then we've got four other rosters so far that have been confirmed. So tough to say, I mean, who should be the, the biggest contender here, really? I guess Toronto Ultra has to be number one on that list compared to, well, number two hard phase, right? Because of what they did last year. But yeah, we've got Ultra confirming. We've got Minnesota Rocker confirming they're coming back. Two more other teams are confirmed at both Los Angeles Thieves teams. Of course, these are the new squads that um, could potentially mix things up. But yeah, storylines all over the park and uh, very exciting first four rosters to be confirmed, especially because this is just the beginning, right? And there's so many other great rosters just around the corner ready to be announced. I imagine Big Red Button, all that good stuff. You guys know the drill. But um, yeah, Los Angeles seems, it's tough to say. I don't really want to power rank these guys yet. I want to wait until uh, we really have some confirmation. For right now, Toronto probably have to be considered the, the number one contenders just because of what they achieved as a squad, right? I think there's a fair bit of risk involved with um, with a lot of these teams, to be fair, like the, the respawn risk of Minnesota Rocker, I think, is still there. There's um, all sorts of questions about Los Angeles Grillers, whether they will can work together. And at Los Angeles Thieves as well, the SMG Joe is kind of an interesting one. I think a lot of pressure on those guys. And can Octane return to this kind of form that we've seen a few years ago? Definitely some questions, but um, Ultra probably after that announcement yesterday have probably the best chance of taking down Phase still, I would imagine, going into this upcoming season. Certainly a lot of talk as well about um, some coaches, analysts, staff, and also substitutes on these rosters. I was kind of surprised to see this from Dereal. Certainly I thought that um, he'd be one of the coaches picked up from the European amateur side into the CDL somewhere. But as he says, lack of opportunities in the CDL to it looks like another year in challenges. Just been accepted for a master's program. So, you know, want to see my working schedule. But yeah, be really interesting to see if Drill gets an opportunity at some point in the CDL. But of course, that's the question mark, right? Are they going to pick up? What are these teams going to do in terms of their um, you know, analyst coaching staff? There's certainly been a fair bit of coach mania going on over there. But also, what are the substitutes going to look like for next year? Because that's the thing. We've seen a lot of announcements for these rosters, but we've seen pretty much no announcements at all as to what substitutes might potentially come into these squads. And that, of course, is a particularly big deal when you consider, okay, well, a lot of these players actually came from the sub bench at some point or another. You look at Minnesota Rocker, for example, and you saw what they did with Stanley last year, that when he came into the team, they became significantly better pretty much overnight. And you got to wonder whether other teams are thinking of doing similar things. We know that Florida Mutineers have got Yeats over there. Maybe he comes in as a, as a starting player even this season already. But a lot of these players are probably looking to replace 
players that have been on their sub bench before and have had, well, good success coming into the starting team with other players elsewhere. So certainly the substitute question is a massive one, especially given the fact that this league is, um, well, it's very stacked with talent. Wanted to mention this as well then from Hyper as he points out to me. So for example, Pristini, a perfect player to put into this category, right? A former world champion, right? And uh, now he finds himself in a very difficult spot. Can't be mad at anyone but myself. Got to get back to what is right. So certainly wondering what the future lies for him next year. Of course, a since deleted tweet. So a lot of players probably in a similar boat to Pristini had starting spots the last couple of years and now find themselves in kind of a precarious position where a lot of other players are getting these starting roster spots and finding themselves even with greater accolades behind them in a spot where they don't really know what the future is going to be for them and maybe that future is on a substitute bench somewhere which um, could of course well mean that they find themselves announced way down the line because um, you know right now these teams are not going to be announcing substitutes anytime soon I would well imagine if um, you know given that they're announcing the starting rosters they've got to find someone else a few months down the line it's probably going to be the case even after the season starts right we saw some of these rosters confirming substitutes after the kind of scouting series they did right at the start of Call of Duty Black Ops Cod War so maybe something to consider and just to finish off with this as well that came out from a well Intel Call of Duty fake Intel account and probably one of these L's here is an I somewhere or other but um, yeah you can see this is a fake account and um, anyway this is what was said sources Hex and Astra unable to reach an agreement on the merger with Optic and NV and some of the implications from this so yeah if you guys saw this then uh, don't worry it's actually fake news we imagine that this Optic Dallas thing is still coming to fruition and this is the first thing I noticed is that like sources right here was not said um, like Crone doesn't do this in all caps even though he doesn't seem to be aware of this himself if, if it's real Crone it's breaking in full caps if it's uh, well it's real Crone it's sources and like he does the lowercase type thing but maybe um, maybe the impersonator account will start changing this up because of course the main TDL Intel account hasn't been verified as of yet but uh, hopefully that'll happen one day or another but very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video really upside the YouTube icon and I you enjoy this content other people like you may enjoy this content as well and I've grow the competitive Call of Duty community thank you as always take care and I will see you next time